from your local election headquarters. This is a special presentation of News 8. And good evening. News 8 is your local election headquarters. With the primary election coming up on June 23rd, we're holding a series of debates this month to help you make an informed decision at the polls. On the Democratic ballot for Monroe County Clerk, current County Clerk Jamie Romeo, and challenger Jennifer Boutte, the Director of Development and Community Engagement for CDS Life Transitions. Each question will be directed toward a candidate who will get one and a half minutes to answer, and then the other candidate will get one minute to respond. Our first question goes to Jennifer Boutte. Jennifer, with the Munner County Clerk's Office reopening to in-person transactions this week, what measures would you put in place to maintain quality services while also considering safety measures for employees and residents due to COVID-19? Good evening. First and foremost, thank you WROC for hosting tonight, as well as the League of Women Voters and the Rochester Lebanese Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. That's a great question, Maureen. So what measures would I have put in place? Well, given that since COVID-19, the clerk's office has been closed up until this past Monday, you know, I was concerned that an office, a public office rather, that provides such uh, critical services has been closed up until this time. I think that there were a number of measures that we could have put into place, i.e. taking temperature as, as well as limiting uh, the traffic, but instead, with the clerk's office being closed until this Monday, we eliminated traffic altogether. So having said that, I would have made sure that we put measures in place to protect not only the employees in the building, rendering the services, but all of the traffic that was coming into the building to receive those services. Thank you. Jamie? Good evening, and I also would like to thank WROC, um, Del Delta Sigma Theta, and uh, the League of Women Voters for putting on this this important debate to this evening. Um, while we have been closed to the public since mid-March, I do want to just reiterate that the county clerk's office and our DMV branches have not actually been closed. Our staff have not had any days off and they've been working every day since this pandemic has started. What we've been able to do this past week is reopen our doors to the public to allow in-person transactions. For several months we were barred from doing that by administrative orders from the, judge, um, from the courts but then also through executive actions by Governor Cuomo. What we've been able to do is we've been able to install acrylic barriers at all of our counters not only at our downtown filing office but also at the DMVs as well. In addition, we're adhering to county executive bellows, local executive orders regarding wearing facial coverings and also the temperature screenings that have been able, that have been ongoing since mid-March in the county office building and in other county facilities. All right, Jamie, thank you. Our next question is for you, Jamie. The county budget is being challenged now due to the economic impact of COVID-19. What strategy will you use to deal with potentially reduced operating funds? And what services at the county clerk's office are considered essential to that end and will be prioritized for funding? The county clerk's office is one of the few operations in county government that is not dependent on the property tax levy or sales tax revenues. We are funded by the receipts that we have directly from the services that we provide. And that's one of the reasons why when we were forced to shutter our doors through state executive orders and administrative orders from the courts, we were looking at how can we continue to make services available to the public through remote means. Since mid-March, the D DMVs have established a number of remote transactions, both per for commercial interest and also for private individuals, to conduct things like vehicle registrations through the mail and also now through a drop-off system. In addition to that, our filing office in downtown Rochester in the count in county office building has not been closed and has been moving primarily to e-recordings for both court filings for essential matters and also for land recordings. Real estate in our community has been one of the areas that while it was slowed during the height of COVID-19, it never fully stopped. So we were still accepting electronic recordings that entire time. Many of our staff working inside the county office building and also working from home. So there are a number of things that we are doing to look at how can we continue to provide services because one, we are a service delivery agency, but also because we know that we are dependent on the fees that we take in from the services that we provide. The essential services that the county clerk's office truly does provide is as the clerk for the Supreme and County Courts, we are mandated to provide those services because we act as an agent for the courts. In addition, we act as an agent for the states as the motor vehicle representative for Monroe County. That's an, a significant reason why we looked at 
providing remote services. All right, Jamie, thank you. Jennifer, would you like to respond? Yes, thank you. So if I was obviously serving in this office right now, um, first of all, I'd carefully look at the Monroe County budget, given the impact of COVID-19, to determine what cost savings measures we could implement to make sure that we are allocating funding to those vital services. Um, there are a number of services that are critical as far as uh, the driver's license and uh, housing deeds, online services, things like that are very important for a number of reasons to our county residents. But in addition to prioritizing funding for essential services, I would also direct that attention, or should I say that funding, to uh, measures that offer um, residents internet access and mobile technology. What I found during COVID-19 is that there are a number of communities, specifically black and brown communities, that have not had access to the internet, let alone mobile devices that would allow them to receive the services that they need. So for me, that's critical. While it's important to maintain essential services, it's also important to revisit uh, introducing new ones. Thank you. All right, this next question is for you, Jennifer. What role does the county clerk's office play in providing government transparency to county residents? What can be done, in other words, to improve responsiveness to resident requests? Thank you again, Maureen. For me, having a career that has been devoted to service for more than a decade, it is first important to me to provide first-class customer service to every resident of this county. Specifically speaking about those underrepresented uh, communities. Now for me, given that I've spent more than a decade in service, it's important to be out here where the people are. In my line of work thus far, I spent a great deal of time in the community of the people that I serve. So in order to best understand the needs of the people, you have to go to where the people are. And that's how you maintain that transparency. That is how you maintain that responsiveness. If you are not where the people are, you will never understand what they need. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're not where they are and you don't understand what they need, then quite frankly, you can't serve them well. Thank you. Jennifer, can you be a little bit more specific about what you mean by being where the people are? So during the designation process, you know, I talked to a number of potential voters and supporters and trying to figure out how the different towns and villages around Monroe County work. You know, it's like conversation is very necessary. So, for example, I learned that some towns and villages have monthly or bi-monthly meetings. Spending time with them, even if it's just for them to review the top of their agenda, to see what the pressing issues are and taking it back to a team of people who can effectively address them. So again, as I said, spending time where the people are, because if you're not where the people are, you won't be able to serve them because you won't know what they need. All right, Jennifer, thank you. Jamie? Thank you. Thank you. We did find when we were forced to shut our doors this past March that we were going to find that issue of the need for communicating with the public because while we did try to move a number of services and we were also instructed through executive order to only conduct online transactions, we knew that one, particularly for state DMV, there's a number of things you can't do online, and we also know that not every resident has access to the internet in their homes. That's one of the reasons why since mid-March, the county clerk's office for Monroe County has really led in the state and being one of the first counties that moved to try to create a lot of remote processes in the middle of this pandemic. First starting with having license surrender bins in different areas of the county, and also by doing vehicle registrations through the mail and now through a drop-off system. What we found were Despite the fact that we were in a pandemic, people still needed to get vehicles on and off their insurance or on and off the road. And we needed to be able to provide that service. We couldn't just wait as we are still a couple months into this pandemic and we're not sure when we can certifiably reopen. That's one of those steps that we took and we're still looking at ways to expand that. All right, this next question again for you, Jamie, and we're kind of expanding on this topic. How will you improve accessibility and service to people who are disabled, underserved, Jennifer mentioned the minority community, the black and brown community, or who do have access, easy access to offices such as the DMV? One of those critical ways, knowing that we have to alter the way that the county clerk's office and the way that state DMV and local DMV branches work, is we really have to look at how do we provide these services right now and how can we provide them in the future. We do know that right now there is a plan coming out from state DMV where there's the presumption that we're going to move to a phase where you can't have in-person transactions for all of the things that DMV could do. Well, what are we going to do if we're trying to move again to online only for residents that need to be able to have access to these services? but can't get onto a computer. That's one of the reasons why when we've 
developed these processes and rolled out since mid-March a number of remote functions through the county clerk's office, we've been looking at how can we integrate these into our new permanent new normal moving forward, knowing that COVID-19 is likely to stay with us for, for unfortunately until we know next year, until there's a long-term health care solution. In addition to that, in our downtown office, downtown filing office side, where we do lots of land recordings, court recordings, and a number of other functions, we found that we were still able to expand, particularly with our land recording system for the real estate industry, what type of documents can we accept through our database? How can we create more access to people to have online access to those things when they're trying to get real estate transactions done. So it's looking at while we do want to move things into the information technology age, we want to do more online, we still have to be able to have that lifeline where we have phone numbers that are answered by people and voicemails that are listened and maintained by our staff so that we can make sure we're getting those that information for these services right directly out to the people. All right. Jennifer? Would you like to respond? Yes. So again, highlighting uh, my career in service, currently speaking with my job at CDS Life Transitions, I am fortunate enough to serve um, individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities and seniors and veterans. Specifically speaking, these three demographics of people don't drive. So again, it is important to enhance our techno technology right here across uh, Monroe County. You know, people, especially in the underrepresented communities, like I said before, you know, COVID-19 has exposed these inequities. So it is important to make sure that we put in place the technological advances necessary, even with mobile devices, even with making uh, Internet access, for example, universal across the county. Years ago, the internet was a luxury. Now it is a necessity. So making sure that we have protocols and measures in place to ensure that everyone across this county receives those services is a big priority right now. Some of those services can only be rendered in person. A lot of them can be done online, so they are definitely worth exploring. All right, Jen next question for Jennifer. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, history has shown that the Monroe County Clerk has long been a stepping stone to higher political office. Why do you think this is? Does the clerk play a role in leading the political party to which they belong? Thank you, Maureen. So I'm going to start off by being transparent, you know, given that I've never held an, elective, an elected office, excuse me, um, I have witnessed from the sidelines that typically there is a transition. Why does this happen? You should always seek to elevate. I mean, no one anticipates staying in one place for their entire career, or at least I don't look at it like that. Um, does it play a stepping stone in um, this next level of their career? I would say absolutely it does, but it also depends on that person. For example, I've been asked at if I am interested in moving up in uh, the political chain, if you will, from this role, should I be elected? And I'm going to be honest with you, only God can say that. I, I can't say that right now because obviously I haven't been elected. Does the clerk's office play a role in the leading political party they belong to? Absolutely it does. Anytime you are responsible for serving people at this magnitude, it definitely has um, a, a, a leading way in the, in the way this party is perceived. It definitely opens opportunities to work with others that are in your party as well. And Ultimately, because you are responsible for the community that you serve, you know, it is important to pay attention and be ready to work with your peers across the party. That is the only way you will strengthen that particular party. Susie, thank you. All right, thank you. Jennifer. Jamie? I, I think it's very transparent that we've seen in our county uh, the ascension that's happened from individuals who have been in the county clerk's office. But I do think that the work of my predecessor, who's now the county executive, Adam Bello, um, kind of demonstrated that um, when we looked at that succession, a lot of the things that now county executive Bello found was that the, the former occupants of the county clerk's office haven't always necessarily paid attention to the functions of that office, haven't always necessarily paid attention to processing things like opt-out phone for pistol permits or other things. And that's a problem. No office should be seen as a stepping stone. I, I completely agree with Jennifer that there's, you know, everyone should try to achieve their full potential. But to hold a position should be to serve in that position. And I know for myself, when I worked very hard for County Executive Bello to get where he is today because I did believe in his vision for the county and it's been very empowering to be able to be part of that vision now working across the hall from him in the county office building. Um, the only other side note I'll just add is that I do think that the county clerk has a role to play in the party but so does every individual member of the party whether you're registered, a committee member or an elected official. 
All right, Jamie, thank you. Our next question is about identity theft. It's a huge issue. It has been now for years. Security, especially online, uh, is really important to a lot of people. What will this, your office do to safeguard people's information? One of the continuing initiatives that the county clerk's office must continue to do is we're looking at how do we make the information that we ho hold accessible to p individuals. How do we make this information transparent for the public? And, so, and that makes information technology and this service, the security measures, quite vital because for the documents that we are legally required to provide to the public, it often contains personal information. And that's why continually reviewing our systems and our databases and our county fusion function and making sure that we're updating patches, we're going with the best technology that we need, and sometimes do we need to revamp that technology to make sure that we are omitting the things that we need to omit while still adhering to the letter of the law to make sure that we're making this information and these documents accessible to individuals. That's definitely not a stagnant process. That can't simply be I purchased the software once and that's just the way it's going to be. We do know that there's continuing changes, particularly in the cyber with identity theft and cyber theft and that's one of the reasons why we've got to continue to look at our firewalls we have to continue to look at our other technologies and other how can we best to safeguard this information while meeting the inherent goal of our office which is to make it available to the public jennifer would you like to respond yes thank you maureen so having worked with a number of populations that uh, serve vulnerable people where um, protecting their identities as well as their uh, personal information has been critically important it's important to make sure that we are proactive about implementing measures to protect the, protect the personal information of and the identities of every resident across this county. As we know, uh, hackers are only getting smarter, so it doesn't help for us to be reactive. It is very important for us to be proactive. I mean, given the last two uh, administrations, we know that there were some significant security breaches, and we also know that there is a great expense that comes with both of them. So my vision would be to be proactive, making sure that there are measures in place to protect every resident of this county. Thank you. All right, time for our next question. Uh, Jennifer, regardless of the stresses placed on government because of the COVID-19 economy, efficient use of tax dollars is always an issue. What ideas do you have for improving efficiency and cost savings at the county clerk's office? Thank you, Maureen. So the first step in this would be to take a careful look at the county's budget. Again, we know that COVID-19 has impacted the county's budget as well as budget, the budget of the city and pretty much everybody across the country who has been impacted by COVID-19. After carefully looking at the budget, my trusted team members and I would explore ways to cut saving as well as uh, reduce some operating costs. And while doing so, I would have to also make sure that we know that every cut we do, it would not impact the livelihoods of our people, whether, the pe whether it's the people that we employ, whether it's the people that we serve. For me, being a servant leader, it is important to protect the livelihoods of the people that I serve. Um, you know, there will be a number of ways that we can explore that. For example, uh, making sure that there are services that, if they can in fact be offered online rather than rendered in person, well then let's explore that. And sometimes it doesn't always have to be a result of uh, decreasing manpower. Sometimes it can simply be as a result of uh, enhancing technology. Thank you. Jamie? The county clerk's office is one of the few county agencies that actually is not dependent on the tax levy for property taxes or the sales tax that we collect um, from the residents of Monroe County, which makes our operation really vital to make sure that we are putting out the amount of work into the community and making services accessible to bring those revenues back in. One of the challenges we're facing right now with COVID-19 is we've not been able to excel to our full potential and provide all of the services that we regularly do because we were forced to be shuttered for a period of time. That's one of the reasons why we really looked to how can we be innovative, how can we look at the way we provide services, find mail-in options, find remote Dropbox options, and other ways that we can continue to provide these services because that's our job and we need to keep them accessible in the community, but because we know our budget is dependent on the revenues that we bring in from the service we provide. The county clerk's office has been one of the few parts of the county budget that's actually contributed back into the, the county general fund. And that's one of the things we're hoping to get back to when we all get through uh, this pandemic. All right, Jamie, thank you. Jamie, this question for you. What is one major improvement in the county clerk's office you'd like to achieve and how would you accomplish it? 
in my brief tenure in the county clerk's office, one of the things that we've definitely identified for a need for is some additional training. The county clerk's office, both from the state DMV side and the, the great wealth of different services that we provide in our downtown filing office, the services we provide are constantly changed by state law, executive order, local laws, federal laws, their court decisions. There are lots of things that affect the way we provide these services and how you can accept certain filings and how you can conduct certain real estate transactions to what we saw with the green light law and how we're conducting new driver's license IDs for individuals of an undocumented status. We f definitely found that we needed to not just rely on others to provide us with that information, but kind of be proactive. And we've definitely seen through our, the administrative team we've been putting together since my arrival in February, We've been looking at training opportunities and what we can do to make sure that we're continuing to always empower our staff with the best information that's possible. In addition to that, we want to make sure that we're having a strong, diverse, inclusive work environment, not just for our staff within the county clerk's office, but because we probably have the most diverse customer base in this entire county because whether you like it or not, every resident of this county is likely to walk through a DMV. So we've definitely also looked at and we're planning on implementing more training to about being inclusive, having healthy work environments, and all of these different things. So that way we can continue to give our staff the tools to be the best that they can be, to be the best servants in our community. All right, Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. So again, highlighting my career in uh, service leadership. As a servant leader, it is important to me to focus on service. I cannot stress that enough. So providing first class customer service to every resident of this county would be my first commitment should I be elected uh, to serve as Monroe County Clerk. Um, take the DMV, for example. You know, the DMV, I've heard a number of stories about their different interactions when people have gone down there for one service or another. So I would really focus on improving that experience by, make, by making sure that the staff on site are knowledgeable about the services being rendered, but more importantly, making sure that they execute those services efficiently and effectively. You know, as someone whose career has been devoted to service, it is important to not only serve the, the residents of this county, but serve them well. Thank you. All right, Jennifer, thank you. And it is time now for our closing statements. The question and answer portion of this debate is done. Let's begin with Jennifer Boutte. Jennifer. Thank you so much. We are living in a time where representation matters now more than ever. Ensuring that representation matters can only be achieved when the people are given choice. So today, I am not seeking your support as a career politician in an effort to maintain the status quo. I am not seeking your support as an educated black woman who would make history if elected, but I am seeking your support as a servant leader who understands the diverse challenges that our community faces, but more importantly, one who has demonstrated my commitment to the diverse people that our county serves. I will bring proven experience from the private and nonprofit sectors to use technology and new approaches to ensure that the highest level of access to county services. I will also ensure that every resident has a voice and every resident is served equally should I be elected to serve as your next Monroe County Clerk. Jennifer, thank you. Jamie? Thank you. Thank you, and I want to thank WROC, the League of Women Voters, and the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority again for hosting tonight's debate. I am proud of the way the Monroe County Clerk's Office, including all of our DMVs, have stood up to the challenges of COVID-19. Throughout this time, while our doors have been closed to the public, our team has continued to show up and step up, adapting services to keep them available through the mail and drop-off systems, answering questions through a number of different forums, and demonstrating, again, their commitment to the residents of Monroe County. It has been an honor to serve alongside them, and I, and I was humbled this week to receive the endorsement of CSCA, whose members make up the vast majority of county clerk staff. Throughout my career, I have been called to public service, from the shoreline of Durand Eastman Beach as a 4-H kid to the halls of the state capitol. I have always believed in the power of local government and was honored to have that confidence from Governor Cuomo to do this job. On primary day, June 23rd, I ask for your support to continue my service as your county clerk. Together, we can continue to modernize the operations of the clerk's office while preserving the legacy of our community for a better tomorrow. All right, Jamie Romeo, Jennifer Pate, thank you so much for joining us. And that concludes tonight's debate. A reminder, New York's primary elections are coming up on Tuesday, June 23rd. Polls will be open that day from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. If you are voting with a mail-in ballot, it must be postmarked by June 23rd. And you can head to rochesterfirst.com to watch this debate and others. That's under 
the local election headquarters tab. And that's it for News 8 at 530. The 6 o'clock news is next. Thanks for watching.